Oh, sh shit's too big. Gotcha. Anyway, today I'm gonna be mounting my AI Prime. Got this little mount from Chewy, it was like 30 bucks. Kind of a scam, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm just gonna be mounting it right here on the tank. I'm actually gonna off center it a little bit just because most of my coil growth is gonna be around this area. That's kind of where I want the strongest light. Oh, big tight. This game's not for nothing. Ugh. All right. Okay. Why are you still filming? So I decided to go with the AI Prime Light, the 16. I'm eventually gonna get a second one, but right now I'm kind of poor. So one is all I can afford. But anyway, I went with the AI Prime just because it's a pretty powerful light, has a bunch of reviews, and it's pretty user friendly. Sponsor me, please. I need it. Anyway, so I'm gonna be mounting it up here. Oh, shit. Maybe this wasn't the best way to do it, but you know, we're all learning here. Nice, nice and tight. Make some good box. Oh, too tight. Perfect. Okay. Mom, we're filming! All right. Moment of truth. Okay! This looks it clean. I gotta get a scraper for this side. But everything else looks, wow. It's worth going to death for, I promise. So we've been cycling the tank for a few weeks and the ammonia hit zero, which is a good sign. But unfortunately the nitrite is still really high. So what we have to do is continue to let it go and continue to dose bacteria. I've been doing that every week. And this little chart is kind of explains what cycling is because ammonia gets broken down to nitrite to nitrate. And this all starts with the fish poop. And trust me, if I let one of my poops in the tank, it would be cycled in like two days because of the amount. Just kidding. It would be actually one day. So at this point, you're probably wondering, Daddy Doug, master of gains, why are you cycling a tank? And the reason of this is because ammonia and nitrite are actually toxic to the fish. They'll bind to their gills and not let them to respirate, so they'll eventually die. And these fish are going to be my kids, my little buddies. If I'm spending my hard-earned money to raise them, I'm not going to want them to die. I want them to have the best life possible. So now the ammonia hit zero and the nitrite is starting to go down from the peak and almost hit zero. So we're going to give it another week, then add the fish. So while we're waiting this week for it to finish cycling, I got some Kato algae, which you can see in the top left corner. And what this algae is gonna do is soak up all the nutrients in the tank because like any plant, it takes nitrates and phosphates to grow. But I ordered this off eBay, and this is why I guess everyone always has the stigma to never trust eBay, because the guy's whole post was clean Kato, clean Kato. And I don't think worms are that clean. And there's also, uh, pest starfish in it as well so someone was lying and now this is just a close-up view of the Kato and I did a freshwater dip because I was not having all these pests the freshwater dip will actually kill all of it so you can see that starfish dead that worm dead if I wanted to see a worm I'd unzip my pants like what is this guy trying to play me as and there was some other bug that I've never seen before maybe it was a bug that little red guy no idea what this is but he definitely was scamming me with some reason so if you guys remember from the last video, I mentioned it's all about the motion of the ocean to please the women. But to please the tank, we have the motion of the ocean in the sump. So essentially what happens is the water comes through the intake and through the filter floss and the sponges. And then it eventually goes down into the bio balls, which host a bunch of the bacteria and then the Kato. 
and then it goes all the way back up and then on the left you have your heater and the return pump to keep the water at 78 degrees and the return pump spits it back out. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, fish alert! <laughs> Big time fish alert! Just went to the store, got some two beautiful Oscillaris clownfish, one normal Nemo, one's a Darwin, so I'm going to put it in to my sump, acclimate them, I'm going to let them sit in here for 15 minutes to adjust to the temperature, and then I'm going to drip, drip acclimate them for about an hour. I'm going to be making a little makeshift uh, drip acclimation, so I'm going to take this piping hot extruder, mm. melt that plastic, wake up the carcinogens in it, you know, all the good stuff. So I'm just poking myself a little hole. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. What's that? It's taking way longer than I thought it would. It's not that big. No, it's not that big. Yeah. I think I gotta use scissors. This is the struggle of reef bros. It's not all glory. Okay, got the hole. Using this leftover tubing I have from my RDI system. Hole's not big enough. Sounds like something my girlfriend would say. Make it a little bigger. Okay. Oh yeah, so now you got the hole in. I'm gonna add a little hot glue around so it stays in place. I think it's a nice seal. This is the worst part. Oh, it's so hot! Oh! Anything for reef bros. Oh man, that was, that was like Latina, spicy. I definitely didn't have a little brief medical emergency where I ran my fingers under the sink. I now know why they call it hot glue and not medium glue. Anyway, so we got this set up. Now I'm gonna tie the knot, try to get a slow drip drip. You want drip like Migos? So you tie the knot, so it'll drip slowly. Get your tape. Just gonna tape this on. Real janky, the reef bro way. All right, now it's time to add the fish. Cutscene. Just kidding. But uh, now it's time to Get these bad boys drip acclimating. So I'm gonna cut the bag. Oh, they double bagged it. Hey, I see you, Reef Co. Give us free fish and I'll shout you out again. Okay. Now very carefully, going to dump them. And, oh, that didn't work. Oh. That was the worst way possible, but now we're gonna drip acclimate them for about an hour. Get them used to their new water. So the whole point of drip acclimating is to slowly get them used to the new salinity. And you kind of think of it like if you're going to bench, you're not gonna throw up three plates and expect to have good results. No, you gotta slowly work up to it and then get your body ready. So that's kind of what we're doing with the fish. All right, so we've had them drip acclimating for about an hour now. So now I'm gonna add them to the tank. 
Show them to their new home, baby. Okay, little guy. Alright, we got the one. In we go. Come here, little guy. Alright. So now that they're in their new homes, they're just gonna try to get used to it. They're probably in a huge shock right now. Like, imagine a giant pick you up and pull you up into a new home. I don't know about you, but I would freak out. I would actually have a panic attack. So they're just gonna get used to it, and eventually they're gonna pair. That's kind of why I want to get two clownfish because they're really hardy fish and pretty good starting fish and they eat anything so they should be a good start for me. So now I want to formally introduce you to self-made drum roll, Snooky and Polly D after the elite show, The Jersey Shore. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I, I need money for fish.